In this presentation, we will create an accounts receivable graph within QuickBooks Pro 2020, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We currently have the open windows open. We can open the open windows by selecting the view dropdown and the open windows list. We're now going to be considering an accounts receivable graph whenever we think about any graph or report other than the major financial statements, balance sheet and income statement. We want to consider what account and which of those financial statement reports are going to be supported with the report or graph we are running. In this case, accounts receivable will be a balance sheet account therefore let's first open the balance sheet we're going to go to the reports drop down up top we're going to go to the company and financial and scroll on down to that balance sheet standard report the balance sheet standard report we're going to take the date as of 022920 end of february remember the balance sheet is as of a point in time accounts receivable is of course right here that represents money that is owed to us by customers so now we want to think about the accounts receivable report which will break out what is owed to us by customer also note we could run another report that would help to support this detail that being of course a report we've seen in the past reports drop down if we go to the customer and receivables we're looking at the customer balance uh, summary report and that will give us our customer balance uh, information and uh, in a summary format we're at 10,974 if I change the dates up top to 02-2920 to 02-2920 we're at the 11274. if we go back to the balance sheet we're at the 11274. next we're going to run the graph a couple ways we can get there we can go to the reports drop down and we can go to the customers and receivables and find the graph here or we could use the report center by going to the reports drop down and the report center so let's go into the report center we're in the standard tab i'm going to maximize this sheet by selecting the maximize tab here and then on the left hand side we want the customers and receivables within the customers and receivables i'm going to scroll down till we get to our graphs here's the accounts receivable graph we can run the report we can change the dates on the report i still i choose i usually will simply run the report so i'm going to run it then we'll change the dates on it nothing's here is it a date problem yes it is we're going to go back up top and change the dates for it change the date to 02 2920 noting once again that it's going to be at the end of february and there's only one date because it is as of a specific point in time how much do people owe us who owes us as of this point in time we have the key to the right which is going to be listing the people that owe us which are going to be customers and then of course the um, graph in the middle of the pie chart for us the total then adding up to the 11 274 that then matching what's on the balance sheet back to the balance sheet we see the 11 274 if we go back to our graph then we can take this number note we can create this graph how is this graph created well if we were to take the customer balance summary report back to the customer balance summary in the uh, open windows export this to excel we can see how to basically create this graph in excel if you want to use that uh, and make your own graph and make it a little bit more flexible in that format let's do that and then we'll copy and paste the graph from uh, quickbooks and see how we can use those items as well we're going to go to the excel up top we're going to create a new worksheet we're going to put that new worksheet into an existing workbook one we have created in the past and we're going to select browse there's the workbook we want going to double click on it we will then export to it here is our excel worksheet we're going to do our normal kind of formatting i'm going to go all the way to the left we're going to click on this screen with the instructions right click on it and delete it then i'm going to say delete i'm going to go all the way to the right then i'm going to pick up this new sheet i'm going to pull it all the way to the right i'm just going to drag it left clicking on it to the right then we're going to do some formatting in the page layout tab i'm going to go to the page layout view i'm going to say okay we're going to go to the view up top so we can remove these splits there i'm going to go to the view up top windows group and remove the splits i'm going to double click then on the name i'm going to call this an ar ag or graph let's just say accounts receivable graph that's what we're going to be making from this now note we might want to re rename the title up here like i haven't done in the prior ones this is going to be ar graph you know and that'll be on the title and then i'll go back over here and back not there but back here and then we need to basically make our graph so all i have to do is then highlight these numbers then go to the insert 
and then we go to graphs we want a pie chart uh, we're gonna, we've been making these 3D pie charts, so we'll make that one. And there we have it. So that's another format, another way you can make the graph. You could rotate the graph. You could put a name up, to, up top or you can delete it. You can then put the percentages into it if you, would, if you so choose by formatting the graph. So, for example, if I chose a different format, it might, it'll look something like this. We could put the percentages in here. Again, you'd have to mess with it to get it you know, to look as, as nice as you would like. Let's go back up top and go to the, the first one here. I'm going to go back up top and select this one here and then it, we can adjust these around and make this uh, look as nice as uh, much nicer but there's a lot of different formats we won't go into all the formatting in excel here but in any case i'm going to put this down below so we'll put it below the data now also note you might want to hide the data in some way if you don't want to print the data like there's a couple ways you could do it. you could try to hide the data or you can even you can just hide the font even if i was to select all of this information and go to the home tab and then go to the color of the font and make it say white and then i can i can remove basically uh the i don't even need this top number right click here and delete and i don't need the total so i can get rid of that formatting right click and delete and then you can basically put your graph right on top of the data <laughs> and then and then you can actually print this report without you know showing the data but just showing the graph if you would choose if you so choose to and then I'm going to put the graph from Excel right underneath it or the graph that we're going to copy from QuickBooks. Let's go back to QuickBooks. Here's our graph there. We're going to go back to Excel. I'll just insert that by going to the insert tab. We're going to go to the illustration. We're going to go to the screenshot and then I'll take a clipping of it. I'll take a clipping of this graph. So we'll just pick up that graph. There it is. And then I'll take a clipping of the key. So I'm going to go below it. I'm going to go to the illustration going to go to screenshot we're going to take a clipping then of the key so here's the key we'll pick that up and that'll be right below it and so there is that so that looks pretty good now we'll print this entire thing to a pdf file we'll go to the file tab up top we're going to go to print and then we're going to print it to a pdf file we're going to save the existing the entire workbook we want the entire workbook which is going to be including 20 pages now then I'm going to go to the printing up top and then it's going to be printing those 20 pages. We're going to see where it wants to go. And here is our dialog box. We're going to go into financial statements. I'm going to call this actually we're going to be putting this into here. I'm going to double click on the financials and say save. Yes. So there we have that. Then I'm going to go back to QuickBooks. And I'm going to print this one. So we're going to go to the reports. I'm going to go to the printing up top. We're going to go then print it to a cute PDF printer and print this item. It'll then give, give us the printing dialog box. We're going to put this into the financials and I'm going to pick, I'm going to name it then the accounts, let's say accounts receivable graph. There we have it. And then we'll save that there. And then let's see what we have in our folder. If we go to section one through four, we then I'm going to delete this bottom one. We don't need that. If we go into the financial reports, then we have all these financial reports that we could then put on an email. We could zip it. I could right click on this and zip the file so that we can then send just that zipped file in an email, or we can send the Excel worksheet or we could send this PDF file, which has everything uh, included in one PDF file so far that we've done, which includes the balance sheet, the profit and loss, the comparative balance sheet, the summary balance sheet, the income statement, the uh, comparative profit and loss, vertical profit and loss, vertical analysis, graphs for the expense and sales. And then we have the uh, sales by customer summary. We've got the sales by item. We've got the accounts receivable. We've got the accounts payable aging. Then we have a graph. Then we have the vendor balance. And then now we have the accounts receivable graph here. Again, we could probably format these graphs a little bit nicer. We certainly don't want this on the other page here, so we can get rid of that. But we won't go into a lot of detail here. That's just an example of how you can basically format these in different fashions.